And happy Monday to you. You're tuned in to Stocks to Watch on Bloomberg Quint and I'm Alex Matthew. You know, the big question this morning is whether our markets will hold on to the stellar gains that were seen at the end of last week. As of this moment, that may not be the case, at, at least at the start. We'll have to see how the session pans out. We're back, of course, after the long weekend and we've got an interesting lineup of stocks to talk about at the start today on Stocks to Watch. My guest is Avinash Gorakshakar of Profit Mart. Thank you so much, Avinash, for joining me and good morning to you. The first talk is interesting because of what we've seen in the Tata Group. Tata Consultancy Services coming out over the weekend and saying that it's going to consider a buyback of equity shares. And that's interesting because this is coming at a time when Tata Sons needs to raise a lot of capital uh, to take the whole uh, deal with the mystery group forward. Uh, so in that context, perhaps it must be seen the stock is currently trading uh, much stronger than it was at the start of the financial year. It must be said at around 2,523. And part of that, of course, is the safe haven demand or rather the uh, sectoral demand that you would see in troubled times. How would you rate this latest update in the context of what we've seen in the recent past? Uh, yeah, good morning, Alex. I think, Alex, this uh, announcement about TCS uh, announcing a buyback on October is a very positive surprise. In fact, uh, you know, markets were not expecting this uh, development to happen, uh, you know, at this point of time, considering the fact that, you know, now the Tatas are clearly looking at raising a lot of money for paying up the Tata Sun stake. Uh, my sense is that, uh, you know, Tata's uh, uh, consultancy would definitely uh, reward shareholders significantly. If you look at the buybacks which happened earlier, you know, when uh, TCS announced their buybacks, this is the third buyback. And in the previous two buybacks, you know, the interesting part was, uh, you know, small investors, uh, you know, definitely uh, got 100% X. And as far as the current buyback offer is concerned, I think the market should look at the size of the offer, which could be anywhere between the region of around 15 to 16,000 crores. And obviously, the uh, buyback price could be anywhere about 28 uh, to 2900. So definitely, this is a positive surprise. And I don't uh, expect, uh, you know, the stock to go down. In fact, my sense is that markets would be looking at anywhere between 2800 to 3000 as a kind of an intrinsic level in the very near term. And most importantly, what kind of management commentary comes out in the quarter two numbers? Our sense is that quarter two could be a very good quarter in terms of dollar terms. And obviously, uh, the management commentary would be also quite important. But net net, both the results and the buyback offer are very much interesting and definitely appear to be on the positive side. And today, you can definitely expect a good uptick on the stock today. Uh, my sense is, you know, it's a stock which one should definitely continue to hold on and maybe you know when uh, whenever a dip happens one should accept this so net net it's a big positive development and probably you know it could give a big re-rating for the entire it sector today interesting and, and very clearly you already mentioned uh, on the 7th of course when the board does consider the buyback it will also uh, pass the results for the second quarter and that's going to be key to watch out for of course the earnings season kicking off this week Let's talk about the second stock. And this is an update that has uh, been brought in by Credit Access Grameen. It's a sector, or it belongs to a sector, Avinash, that a lot of people were concerned about because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Collections, they say, however, have improved significantly in September to 88% from 74% in March. And that's a big number. What they're also saying is that around 77% of their customers are willing to pay the 100% of uh, the obligations. And only about 8% of their customers can't make any payment. So that is a positive statement coming out in the September update from Credit Access Grameen, right? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, Alex, uh, if you look at the kind of management commentary which has come out for Credit Access uh, Grameen, I think definitely this news flow is positive. And I think uh, quarter two could definitely be a significantly better quarter as compared to quarter one, you know, when uh, the lockdown impact was quite significant. I think gradually uh, with the unlocking scene seeing our sense is that uh, you know most of the microfinance companies including uh, Grameen uh, credit Grameen could definitely show a better set of numbers my sense is that hopefully we could see a better second half which would be much more uh, you know significant in terms of both revenue and profit for uh, the first half overall I think things are getting back to normal and hopefully you know I think the December quarter could even be a better quarter for the company 
so i think net net you know one is reassured to know that 77% of their borrowers are willing to pay 100% of their dues and a very marginal 7 8% are yet uh, you know not able to pay up that so this is definitely positive for the stock in the near term but in the medium term i would believe that uh, this business is definitely going to grow considering that now normal cs slowly started coming back in the microfinance market so apart from this company you know other significant players like even a bandhan bank could see an uptick which is a significantly large player in the microfinance banking space i was actually going to ask you very quickly avinash uh, whether you would pick this counter or whether you would pick uh, something like a bandhan uh i would be more positive on bandhan bank considering the fact that uh, alex this stock has been written down quite significantly from most importantly you know we have seen significant reduction in moratorium levels from almost 70 uh, odd percent to levels of almost about you know below, below 50 odd percent so i think clearly bandhan clearly qualifies as a better risk reward bet although you know we are also positive on credit gramin but i think in terms of the risk reward ratio i think bandhan bank could see a significant uptick today because uh, you know obviously this news flow is sentimentally positive not only for uh, credit gramin but for the entire mic- microfinance sector and i think bandhan is a significant player here so we should expect a decent uptick in bandhan today and obviously you know uh, uh, look at the management commentary and the q2 numbers which are expected so uh um, so all right so that takes care of the uh, the microfinance space the third stock i thought was very interesting and a lot of people bought into this stock because of the advantage that uh, was perceived with regard to crude prices i'm talking about polyplex uh, the latest update however is that the thailand subsidiary has approved the proposal to set up a 50000 ton per annum thin film line in alabama which is uh, alongside or adjacent to the existing line and this will be commissioned in 24 hours Uh, at a cost of 102.8 million all of that of course coming through internal accruals and uh, existing cash stores so uh, and what they also saying that it, it, it's going to be accompanied by de bottlenecking of the existing uh, resin plant uh, what would you rate this as and are you a favorable uh, or are you favorable towards holding polyplex uh i think uh, alex uh, polyplex has been one of those companies in the you know uh, uh, you know uh, packaging space especially the polyester film packaging uh, segment which have over the last 12 to 15 months in fact last year you know they recorded a top line of approximately 4 and a half thousand crores and a bottom line of 700 crores uh the momentum in the quarter one of fy21 has also been quite decent the company has posted a profit of almost 400 crores plus and the management commentary has been quite positive they are very hopeful that you know globally demand could grow by about 5 to 6% and the biggest advantage for polyplex is that it's got a large presence not only in india but even in markets like us europe as well as the rest of asia so that gives them you know fair amount of economies of scale this expansion will def- definitely help them capacities you know which would obviously uh, be, uh, be commissioned you know after another 18 odd months but my sense is that valuation still look pretty cheap and uh, considering the fact that earnings growth has been quite decent and they have a fair level of uh, you know economies of scale this stock could possibly see some further re-rating although it's a commodity stock and where valuations are not very high in terms of price earning multiples i would be uh, quite positive on the earnings growth at least for the next 6 to 12 months so definitely you know this is an interesting stock where possibly another 15 20% upside is possible and i think investors would obviously look at their track record the size of their plants and the overall demand scenario which looks quite interesting because a large part of the demand comes from b2c customer segments and where you know you are seeing mm. a decent amount of pricing power from company like polyplex absolutely thanks so much uh, avinash for sharing your view on these three stocks Uh, as always thank you so much for joining us on bloomberg quint and to you dear viewers do stay tuned it's going to be an interesting session as of now pointing to a flat start uh, for the benchmark indices we've got a lot uh, lined up for you on bloomberg quint so do stay tuned